Hey everybody, Kowalski here, checking in with another one of our Hashtag Lower Decks episode review discussion videos. Today, of course, we're gonna be talking about episode nine, Crisis Point. So episode nine has come and gone and boy was it pretty damn good if I'm being perfectly honest. This is definitely getting up there once again as my favorite episode of the season. It definitely feels like almost every episode continues to take that title. It's going to be quite interesting when I do my full season review of how I'm going to have to break down all the episodes as to actually being the best of the best. I know I talked about last week's video where I was talking about episode eight being the first true episode where they really started to crack out their formula and really begin to understand exactly how to present all of this information to us from a audience perspective about our Lower Decks crew, the bridge crew, the jokes, the references, and a great story. So this definitely continued on with that trend with what we got kind of got from episode eight into episode nine. And this one was amazing. Obviously, this one was much more of a parody slash reference pile pot of conglomeration of all of the different Star Trek films. And I honestly, loved it. I loved everything about this episode. I thought the storyline was great. I thought the plot point was great. I like the fact that all of our main characters got things to do with it. I like the fact that all of our bridge crew characters got things to do with it. And they weren't afraid to really pull the punches with their references. It really had fantastic, you know, just a just a fantastic plethora of references from all of the different Star Trek films, including the Kelvin movies, which is surprising because I know I mentioned that last week where I was kind of curious to see how many Kelvin references they were going to have, but they definitely had a good amount no more so than I think any of the other you know movies that they kind of had to reference and there's a lot of Star Trek movies out there for them to work off of but they did great with the you know the, the lens flares and the action you know and the, and the fast pacedness of things and certain types of different little action pieces that were happening definitely related back to the Kelvin stuff so I'm really glad that they did that and the Kelvin stuff wasn't just completely ostracized and they only focused on the TNG TOS era stuff. They got it all together. And I thought it was fantastic. I really thought it was really well done. And I really enjoyed the big lessons that we got here from our main crew. You know, I, there was some really fantastic bits of things that we've learned, not only about, you know, specific characters, but also things that were revealed to some other characters. And overall, I thought it was just really, really fantastic. Okay, so really quickly, the best parts of this episode, God, it's really hard to just describe the best parts of this episode. Really, everything about it was fantastic. I will say, again, that they really have cracked the nut on this formula. We not only spent a lot of time with all of our Lower Decks bridge crew members who each of them had their own personal little arcs that they went through, but we also spent a lot of time with the bridge crew, which was also just equally as great, and their interactions with the you know Lower Decks team. It was really fantastic, really, really well done. So obviously the episode is kind of Mariner focused and you would think that okay so she's the only one that's going to have a bit of an arc in this episode but that's really not the case and obviously for her the whole thing is like kind of like going through this therapeutic moment where she needs to kind of learn a little bit more about herself who she is as a Starfleet officer who she is as a daughter and who she is as a friend and the lessons that we learned from all that were really fantastic obviously Mariner had her big arc there where she apologized to her captain aka her mother Captain Freeman for kind of being a bit of a jerk and a bit of a hassle to kind of deal with something that she really learned from her experience dealing with her holographic self when she was playing the role of Vindicta which was fantastic and a really fun way to kind of you know showcase some lessons learned there and and I just really enjoyed that I enjoyed that whole arc I like how they layered it into the funnier aspects of the show and all the references but they were still teaching us something about our character and obviously then Boimler who's his whole you know journey throughout the episode was trying to prepare for his you know kind of interview with Captain Freeman to be a part of the you know diplomatic team or whatever it was and so he was still trying to learn things about you know the captain and how best to approach that but he also learned the big secret reveal that mariner is the daughter of captain freeman and the dadmiral uh, i'm assuming he's probably going to figure that out at some point as well so that was really great and he had a lot of things to do in the episode and he was definitely kind of you know carrying the story along in his own way and then of course rutherford had his own little bit there with his boss and like how he was kind of you know connecting with him and how they had like a really great moment there and they all kind of just kind of experienced different things in a very therapeutic kind of way you know and and i think boy was the only one that kind of came out on the negative on that one but he did find out a little bit about Mariner so we'll see how that plays out in the 10th episode the final episode but yeah so Rutherford had his whole thing and I really enjoyed that and really the Tendi plot was really where it kind of connected a lot with me and the part that I actually enjoyed the most even though it was focused on the least if that makes sense so the whole situation with 
Tendi was during the whole introduction there with Vindicta, she was like, oh, and this is my Orion slave, thieving, scoundrel, traitor person, because obviously Tendi is Orion, and she was not really enjoying that little bit. It's it's kind of funny that like at the beginning there, she's kind of like, ah, oh, you know, I'm kind of going to get into this, and then later on when Mariner references it again and kind of, you know, says these things about her again, she kind of just kind of goes off on her and says, you know, this is not therapeutic, you know, you're being really mean to me, you're stereotyping me, not all Orions are the the same and and you know you're hurting my feelings and she leaves and then later on at the end of the episode they reconcile with Mariner apologizing to her about what had occurred and also Tendi kind of talking to her so the reason why I like that so much is we have Mariner peer pressuring one of her friends into playing along and Tendi kind of feeling like she kind of has to play along in some regards because she doesn't want to be a party pooper and they're obviously having a big you know big laugh and a big fun with this huge movie production in the holodeck so she doesn't want to you know kind of just be a stick in the mud and, and kind of dampen her the whole mood so she plays along with it a little bit through that peer pressure but when she's confronted with it again she actually stands her ground which is a fantastic lesson I think for both adults and for younger audiences to kind of see and she stands her ground and says you know listen we're not all the same and you're really hurting my feelings and I'm out of here like this is crap and Mariner then apologizes for it you know so the lessons there is not only did Mariner recognize that she did something wrong to her friend but she apologized for it and then Tendi accepted her apology while also acknowledging the issues that her own race does have that that there are a lot of Orions that are kind of bad people you know bad folks that do bad things but that she isn't that person and that's why she's actively on the Cerritos and in Starfleet and being a part of of the Federation and stuff like that and I thought this was just a fantastic fantastic lesson for anybody out there to really learn and kind of get a hold of and kind of see. It was a beautiful way to kind of, you know, just layer in a really thought-provoking, a really fun lesson for young teens and even for adults to kind of, you know, look at. And it's a great commentary on a lot of things that are going on out there in the world where people are really judging people, individuals, they're judging whole groups based off of individuals' actions in all areas, both on religious fronts, occupational fronts, you know, uh, you know, uh, race, gender, creed, all of those things. People are judging entire groups based off of the actions of just a few, and it's kind of not fair. It really isn't fair, to be perfectly honest. And this episode definitely had a great social commentary and a solid lesson to learn there, but it did not overwhelm the episode. It didn't bog it down in any way, and we still got a fantastic fantastically entertaining episode overall. It was really fantastic that they, able, they were able to add that into an episode as crazy and as zany and as reference heavy as this because you could easily get distracted by all of the movie references and all those things that are happening inside there that are related to the movies. But the fact that they bothered to actually add this in there is just, just, Mwah. Just so perfect from a writer's perspective. You know, the writers clearly worked absolutely tirelessly on this script in order to get that to work exactly the way that it did. And I thought it was great. I thought it was fantastic. So that's kind of like the big lessons that we kind of got there, you know. So I really enjoyed the, the episode for those specific reasons. Now, talking a little bit about what's going on with our characters, obviously Boimler now knows that Freeman is the mother of Mariner. Now, it's unclear as to whether or not he's going to tell the rest of the Lower Decks team that. Based off of the preview that we got for the 10th episode, he's at least teasing Mariner about it. So it's possible they do kind of talk about it in more of an open setting. Or maybe they're just doing that in private. I'm not quite sure. But there's definitely definitely going to be a bit of a dynamic there if Boimler feels pressure to maybe reveal that secret. I mean, he doesn't like, you know, hiding that from the other, you know, two, you know, Lower Decks team members, which is Rutherford and Tendi. Or maybe something will happen in the episode that forces Mariner to reveal, you know, who her parent is and that she has to, you know, rouse the Lower Decks team in order to save the captain or whatever it is that's going on there. It's not quite clear how that's going to play out, but it is interesting that we finally got that reveal in episode 9 and we're going to kind of see what happens and how that plays out in episode 10. It almost seems like they should have put that in episode 10 as a bit of a cliffhanger thing, which makes me think that we're going to get a bit more of a cliffhanger for episode 10. So talking, of course, about episode 10... This is the finale. This is this is the this is the final episode of the first season. Not the final episode of Lower Decks. Um, we still have a second season that's already been ordered and paid for it, and they're already working on it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a, an announcement here shortly of seasons three and four. Uh, that would be really nice. But episode ten is obviously the season finale of this particular season, and I don't really know what to expect. You know, the only thing that I'm kind of thinking is going to happen is they're going to replicate classic TNG style, which is their two-parter season finale season premieres you know obviously the best of both worlds is a great example of that but that was clearly not the only you know situation where that occurred with you know they didn't do it always but it was a very kind of common thing for tng to do that 
So I think that they might actually do something like that, where I personally feel like whatever the action or the main plot of this episode is going to be resolved, actually, within the first 20 or so minutes. And the last two or three minutes is where we're going to get introduced to the cliffhanger hook. That's just my personal opinion. I think they're going to do something a little bit different. I do know that uh, Treklad actually threw out this idea through, I think, on a live stream or something like that, or maybe it was on Treklad's live stream, somebody that was on there, threw out the idea that they're going to do a to-be-continued thing, like, in the middle of the episode, and then they're just going to cut to black, and then they're going to come back and be, like, continuing it right now. That's kind of like a joke on the whole two-parter thing. That's also really creative. That would be really funny as well. That would be a fun way to kind of play on that trope of the two-parter. So it's curious to see how this is going to play out. Um, I, I am expecting a cliffhanger. I kind of want a cliffhanger, but I'm just because I, I want to feel that more of that anticipation, but I'm also just anticipating the second season just in general. I, I really have fallen in love with this show. I love these characters. I've loved it since the first episode that I got to see. I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant on it, but I know folks at this point have really started to come around on it. And I do know that hopefully that, that you know, that I do know that there's a lot of issues with the international release stuff. So not a lot of people have seen it in an international market. Yes, there is legal ways and illegal ways to see it, but there are not a lot of people in the international market have seen it. So hopefully when they get to see it, they fall in love with it as well. And they're able to get just as excited for season two. All right, guys and gals, that does wrap up my discussion video for today for episode nine of Lower Decks. I am, of course, curious to hear what you guys and gals thought about it, so get your comments up down below. Also, while you're down there, if you did enjoy this video, please throw a like and a subscribe up so that you can stay up to date with all the latest Star Trek news, episode reviews, movie reviews, hopefully, and much, much more in relation to the Star Trek universe. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Live long and prosper, my trickies!